So today I'm in Huai'an in China, which was about three hours on the train and another couple of hours driving outside of Beijing. And I've been here for the last uh, day and a half visiting an international school and talking to the, uh, the teachers and the students. And what they requested for the presentation was a particular focus on what it's like to be a student in North America for students who were, who were interested in studying overseas. I started out by telling them a story about a time when I was attending a parent-teacher conference at a high school. I talked to two science teachers on the same evening, one right after the other. They were sitting about three meters apart. And I sat down opposite the first one and he pulled out his grade book. He put his finger at the top of the list of names and he ran his finger down the list until he got to my son's name. And then he ran his finger across the list of grades for the semester and he read them out one by one. He got a nine out of 10 on the first task, a nine and a half on the second, and so on all the way along the list until he got to the end and he read out the percentage. I don't know what it was, but he said something like he got a, he got 94% on the semester. It was a good semester's work. And then he sat back and smiled at me. After a little more to and fro, we got up, moved three meters, sat down opposite the second science teacher, similar introductions. He found out which child was ours. And then he sat back and thought for a moment and he said, you know, I've appreciated having your son in my science class this semester because the place where he sits in the classroom, there's another student who sits immediately behind him who has some learning difficulties. And we have long blocked science classes. And this other student who sits behind your son just easily gets lost in the middle of these, these long sessions, easily loses track of the plot of where we're headed and why we're doing what we're doing. And he said, I've noticed your son this semester choosing tactful moments when it's not disturbing anyone to just turn around and make sure that this other student knows what's happening and can keep up with what we're doing, knows what the task is. And then he said, that's been a really important contribution to our science class this semester because I've been emphasizing to my students all semester that if we're gonna be a Christian learning community, then we're not just here for our own success. You're not in class just for your grade uh, and your achievement, your success. You're here for your neighbor. You're here for the person sitting to your left and to your right. You're here for the person in front of you and behind you. And he said, I really appreciated your son taking that to heart and just turning around and, and helping this other student who needed a little help to stay focused. That's been a really important contribution to the class this year. Now, I left that conversation thinking a few different things. First, I, I thought I would much rather uh, have my children taught by the second teacher than the first one. He seems to have a, a bigger vision. I was struck that these were two science teachers that uh, were both good at teaching science on the evidence I had available. My, my children did well in both of their classes. They seemed to be getting good results. They seemed to have a good grasp of their scientific material. Uh, if we look at them just in terms of whether they were successfully uh, transmitting understanding of science, as far as I know, both were doing equally well. And yet they seem to have a strikingly different way of narrating their own role as a teacher, a different imagination about what their role as a teacher might be. I found myself wondering how many science teachers in North America see it as a part of their explicit responsibility as science teachers to teach the nature of interdependent community, to teach students about relationships, mutual support, uh, about not just being focused on individualistic success. And yet that was what this second science teacher had been thinking about. Now, what does that have to do with students wanting to study in, in North America or what it might be like to, to learn at Calvin College? Well, the connection I made uh, yesterday afternoon for them was to say, uh, certainly at the place where I teach, one thing that is really important to us is having our students think about uh, the connections between the ideas that we study and the practices that we study and the rest of our life in the world. Uh, to not think, when I work with education students, I don't want them thinking that teaching science is just teaching science or that teaching mathematics is just teaching mathematics. That when we step into a classroom and teach, uh, our worldview is involved, our beliefs, our values, uh, our practices reflect some of our commitments, reflect some of what we think about what the proper way is to interact with other people, with the material world, uh, with other creatures. That's reflected in the kinds of practices that we choose to learn through. And one of the things we certainly want for our students is that they not just receive information, repeat it on tests, achieve good grades, get qualifications, graduate, but that they're also provoked to think about how uh, their beliefs, their values, their commitments, their faith uh, are actually bound up in their choice of practices, whether that's in teaching or whether it's in engineering or nursing um, or philosophy, whatever area it's in. And so I suggested to, uh, to the students I talked to yesterday that one of the things that they should be thinking about as they look for places to study in higher education is what kind of human being is this educational institution inviting me to be? Can they articulate their vision for what else their education is doing other than conveying 
uh, information and qualifications. You can go to a lot of different places and get a good math degree, a good engineering degree, uh, but I think that, that schools and universities should also be able to articulate what else it is they're looking for, what kinds of formation are they offering. Everyone's offering formation of one kind or another. Everyone's making choices about how to structure their classroom, about how people should interact, about what examples to use, what stories to tell. So can the place that you're applying to articulate that vision? Uh, there are many places that can, and then the task is to sit and listen to that vision and see if this actually seems like uh, an invitation to become the person you were meant to be. So today I get to head back to the station, have another ride on the bullet train, uh, headed back to Beijing to visit another school there and talk to uh, some more students who, who might be interested in studying internationally um, and some teachers who want to, to extend their, their educational skills. So more travel today and uh, hopefully my brain will be fully in the time zone. <laughs>